Today is the anniversary of my most powerful out-of-body experience. It took place at a meeting with four other people present. It was part of a workshop that I was conducting at the time. Um, we, were, we had a small research group and we would exchange ideas, uh, talk about different philosophies and different techniques that could be used to induce different spiritual states, altered states of awareness. On this particular day I was teaching the G technique which was a technique and is a technique that I use for inducing out-of-body experiences. Specifically it uses physical tension and a breathing technique to create the perfect state for the out-of-body experience to take place. On this particular day I started to demonstrate the technique to the others present. After a few minutes I, I got the impression that it wasn't really working, it was like somehow I hadn't relaxed enough or I hadn't built myself up to that point enough yet. But somehow, just as I thought that, it was like quite an oppressive force seemed to come over me and at that point I felt that I needed to go down to ground level to get some uh, solidity or to avoid falling over. It was quite an intense experience, quite an intense feeling. So I went down to ground level. As I did that, almost as soon as I touched the floor and went into a comfortable position, I went into an out-of-body experience. I found myself moving through what seemed like a kind of jungle environment. It was very green, there was maybe a stream, there was uh, plants, flowers, there was a real sense of being in some kind of jungle, sort of tropical type environment. I was moving through this environment quite fast. Um, I remember coming to not exactly a clearing but a kind of opening in, in, the, in the trees and as I reached that particular point the experience seemed to split and it was like suddenly I was standing in the middle of central London. I was standing on the corner of Moore Street and Old Compton Street which form a kind of point that, from which you can see the full length of Old Compton Street in central London in Soho. I was standing there, I felt quite rooted to the spot. It wasn't really like uh, I could move around. I, I don't know whether I could have done if I'd chosen to, but for some reason I didn't choose to and I felt like the right thing to do was to just stay on that spot. I had a sense of a body, which is not always the case in my out-of-body experiences. Sometimes I can simply be a, a sense of a travelling awareness or an idea of some kind of... Uh, almost like a ball of consciousness, something like that. But in this particular experience, I was standing very much rooted to the spot. Then as I became aware of where I was, I knew the area quite well. I used to work there a few years before this experience. As I stood there, suddenly around 100, 125 metres away from me, there was an explosion that burst out from the right-hand side of the street. As this happened, obviously there was chaos began to ensue and people were running around. I remember uh, a man passing very close by me going towards the explosion. I had a sense of the right hand side of me, um, uh, maybe glancing to the Polo Bar, which was an Italian restaurant that was on the other side of the road from where I was standing. Um, I generally got this sense of the chaos happening in Old Compton Street. Then it was almost like a, a wave of energy hit me. It was, it was like the emotions of the people that had been either injured or killed in in the attack. The, it turned out to be a terrorist attack. I, I was hit by this wave of energy, and as that hit me, I went into a kind of void state, what I've come to call the void state which is a sort of black state where it's almost like you're unconscious but you're not unconscious, you're still aware but there's no sensory input, it's just a kind of black um, still state. Not unpleasant, just um, nothing really in a way of uh, sensory input coming into the experience. So I stayed in that particular state. 
what I now know is from the outside, uh, people were getting a sense that I might be distressed in some way or that there was uh, something intense happening to me. So one of the people present, um, his name was Chris, he started to coax me out of the experience. He started to try and um, bring me back to normality, which seemed to work quite well. He, he seemed to slowly be able to uh, kind of bring me back. When I came out of the experience, we made, we made a circle in the middle of the, it was kind of a large rehearsal space that we were using. We sat in a circle and I described how I'd seen this bombing. Um, I'd been standing on the corner of Moore Street and Old Compton Street and also that I believed that this was a precognition. Now I'd never claimed to have a precognition before and this was actually the first time I'd ever seen or had anything like that. It did have a distinctive bluish grey quality to the visual component of the experience which I'd had once before at that point in probably my first veridical out-of-body experience. In that particular experience I'd been able to travel to um, a, a man's house and see his name on a letter or letterhead and then return home and check the details including the postcode which I'd been able to see on a sign as I passed it by um, and his name and from that I was able to check that he did actually live at that location and then follow it back. So it seemed that this bluish grey type experience was characteristic of veridical or objective out-of-body experiences. So I described all of this to everyone present and then uh, went home, wrote all the details down in my diary, so that would have been done within two hours. So I have a very contemporary detailed description of what I saw and all of the details that I've just related to you. Then five days later there was in fact um, a nail bombing that took place on Old Compton Street in the Admiral Duncan pub which is essentially the correct distance from the point I was standing at on the corner of Mork Street and Old Compton Street. Um, all of the details fitted very very accurately with what I'd seen and there were no details that were incorrect in, in my description. Now I'm going to uh, let you hear from uh, Lawrence Brightman, who was one of the witnesses who was present at the site of the outer body experience and saw the whole process that I went through and heard me describe what I saw. So again, this is a, an experience with a witness and someone who can verify what, what I've just described. In 1999, we were part of a research group uh, and on a session on the 25th of April in 1999, we met about OBEs. We were looking at uh, developing this in our own experimentation and our own experience. And we knew Graham had had a lot of experience with, with OBEs, and he had developed a, something called a G technique, which he wanted to demonstrate to us, which uh, so that we could use it on our own experience. He went into a trance to show this to us and at first not much happened but as time progressed he became more and more ag agitated. After a while one of us brought him out of it because we noticed this agitation occurring and we uh, then he told us what he had seen. He felt very moved by it. He felt it was definitely precognitive. And um, he described basically being at the corner of Old Compton Street and Moore Street in Soho in central London. It was an area he knew well because he had worked in that 
in that area. And he said he looked down Old Compton Street and he saw an explosion happen about 100 meters away from him. It happened on the right side of the street and he could see people running away from the explosion that had been in it. What he, what I found particularly interesting at the time was that he described a wave of emotion hitting him. It, and I wondered if being in that state made him more sensitive to that than if he had been there physically. Although feeling it was precognitive, he couldn't say when or indeed if it would definitely happen. So we didn't know what to do with that, but we, we recorded the information. And what happened was that five days later, on the 30th of April, there was an explosion. It happened in the area that he had seen at the Admiral Dunton pub. Two people were killed and 30 people were injured. <laughs>